Now, resonance, you have not studied this yet, but I'm sure you have come across this term. Definitely. But then again, you will study this concept in detail in organic chemistry going forward. So right now, we are just going to give you a teaser trailer of the topic. We are going to study just so as to give you an intuition of what this concept is. Alright, cool. So let's start. So the first question is, why did we need the theory of resonance? And so it goes that, for example, there were some structures which could not be entirely explained based on a single lowest structure. Now, let me elaborate on what I mean, right? So, for example, take O3, right? This is O3, right? We can check that the charges are zero overall on the entire molecule, right? So, we basically, if we drew this particular structure, that meant that this particular bond over here was relatively smaller than this bond over here, right? The bond length, you can get that from the multiplicity of the bond. Also, we did some experiments, we did some chemical reactions in which we had some way of identification of where the negative charge is in this molecule. Right? So, we did some experiment, we used some uh, really, really electron hungry species in those experiments, in those mechanisms, which we could measure somehow. Right? I'm not going into the details, but yeah, going forward, we will study this particular thing in organic specifically. Right? You will come across mid so many such reactions in which right, you will have electron hungry species or electron deficient species or electron rich species and there will be many reactions involving them. But I'm just going extra layman here. Okay. So you using some mechanisms and some reactions and some experiments, we try to determine in this molecule, what is that region where there is an excess negative charge, where there is electron-rich region within this molecule, right? And the result, what we were expecting was that this particular region should have been the electron-rich region, right? I'll come to the result, right? And that will boggle you. So the result was that essentially, right, the charges were equally distributed. Right? And the bond lengths were coming out to be the same. Now, that is quite bizarre because I don't understand anything that is written on the screen right now. What is that dotted bond? What does it mean? So, let's go back. So, people said, what is happening here? Right? Both the bonds, both the OO bonds, this bond right, and this bond, first of all, are coming out of the same length. They are longer than a double bond. They are shorter than a single bond. All right, cool. Fine, so that's one thing. More importantly, both these ends, both these ends of the molecule are turning out to be electron rich according to the experiments. So we said, you know what? There's another way to represent this exact molecule, right? And essentially, in terms of energy or stability, if you look at it, these molecules are quite similar to each other in terms of energy or stability, right? So hypothetically, how about we say that the molecule in reality is somewhere in between those, right? Somewhere, somewhere of a combination of these two is neither this and nor this, but rather a combination of these two. So, in theory, on paper, we can write O3 like this, right? But in reality, what will we say? That between any of these two OO bonds, right? The bond is somewhere between a single bond and a double bond, right? And that's why you have this over here, right? The dotted bond line in addition to the solid bond line, all right? Similarly, if we are to have a combination of these two on this particular oxygen, to to the total charge is coming somewhere around 0 for this one over here, minus 1 for this one over here. Take the average out of it. It turns out to be minus half. 
We did the same thing, remember, for bond order as well. Double bond here, single bond here, bond order 2, bond order 1. So the average is 1.5. We are doing the same thing for charge as well. Right? Okay. So it turns out the actual molecule, right, could actually be represented this way. While in theory, we can say that it is a combination of these two, neither of these two formats actually exist. Right? And there's actually a name for these terms. We'll come to it. But first, let's try to, you know, with respect to these ex this example, let's try to understand the concept of resonance and the various postulates within. If a su single Lewis structure cannot represent a molecule, resonance is used to determine the molecule accurately. Determine the molecule, what do we mean? We mean the various parameters, the information regarding the molecule. Where, what are the bond orders? What is the bond length? What are the different charges spread around on the different atoms within the molecule? For example, if you look at it, on this particular oxygen, we had positive 1 on both the places and so we ended up with a positive 1 here as well. Alright. So bond angle, bond lens, bond other bond parameters, properties, which cannot be explained by a single Lewis structure. We draw, we draw a, a collection of Lewis structures, right? And we try to see, okay, can on the basis of all of these different Lewis structures, can we explain collectively all the properties of this molecule? If so, let's try to conjure up a way in which the act mo molecule actually will exist, right? And theoretically, how different formats of the molecule could be there. Now, the statement here is slightly wrong. Because what happens is when the resonance theory was being developed, the opposite of this happened, right? They looked at the they looked at the properties and then they tried to develop different structures. Right? Nowadays, what we do? We try to study the concept so that we can look at the different Lewis structures and go the other way. That is, we can look at the different Lewis structures and then predict how the molecule might actually be like. Right? Because when they develop the theory, they are just reverse engineering the observations into theories. Once they have developed the theory, it has been tested, it, it certain flaws have been pointed out, but majority it has been said, okay, fine, so this seems sensible. Right? Now that that has happened, we are trying to go the other way. We are trying to predict the actual molecular properties and parameters. Cool. So, what are these two things? Resonance structures and resonance hybrid. So, whatever we do in theory, that is, according to me, all of these Lewis structures could be collectively used to explain the final structure. Those are called as resonance structures. Similarly, the actual molecule is the resonance hybrid. So, we say it is a hybrid of all of those. Right? And in a lot of talk, textbooks, you might find examples, right? Uh, for example, a dragon combines with a horse and you end up with a unicorn. We are not going into that. Right? Okay. Cool. Now, resonance structures are usually, usually similar in energy. Right? If something is there which is like really, really unstable, right? Its contribution to the final resonance hybrid. Remember, resonance structure, which one was that? Resonance structure was the, in theory one, resonance hybrid was the actual one, right? So for the resonance structures, the in theory one, if someone is there, some one particular theoretical structure is really unstable, we say that in the hybrid, its contribution will be really low. So we consider species which are stable, and also we consider species, a collection of species, which are similar to each other in terms of energy and stability. Similar, not same. All right. Similar bonding and non-bonding electron pairs. What does this mean? Think about it, right? So you're not changing the total number of electrons. You're not generating a positive charge. 
you're not generating a negative charge. So yeah, how many loan pairs you have, how many bought pairs you have might change individually, but their collective sum, the total number of electrons do not change. Now, what do we have over here? Identical positions of nuclei. Then again, you don't alter the internuclear arrangement. You don't, if O3 has oxygen, 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 you don't make it a linear structure. No, you don't do that. You, as you start with the fact that I am not going to change the position of the nuclei. All right, so in all of the resonance structures, the position of the nuclei is same and the other two points that we studied also imply. Cool. Let's move forward. What do we have? Resonance hybrid. So let's look at that. Actual structure of different possibilities right? or different possible structures. So this is the actual structure, right? That is the key word. Here. What other uh, stuff do we have over here? lower energy than any of resonance structure. So this is the most stable one, right? So you might have, okay, so this is one theoretical possible structure. This is the stability. This is another, this is another. So the hybrid of all of them will be in such a way that it ends up being more stable than either one of them, right? So it take any one of them, the resonance hybrid will be more stable than them. Understand? All right. It does not violate the rule of covalent maxima. Obviously, you're not doing some drastic, unrealistic, out of the world thing here, right? So, the number of electrons do not change, the internuclear positions do not change, and the covalent rules are not violated. The basic principles of covalent bond are not violated. All right, cool. Now the point is there's two terms we need to study localized and delocalized. What does localized mean? Right? So when an electron pair is moving around under the influence of two nuclei, right? I don't know how it is moving. It is just my random hand motion, right? This is my random hand wave, not wave wave, this wave, right? So yeah, it, some electron uh, electron pairs are moving between two nuclei in no fashion that we can comment about because courtesy of Heisenberg, right? Uncertainty principle. So that is the localized, that this electron pair is localized, right? Electrons restricted between two atoms. But when these electron pair start moving under the influence of multiple nuclei, Right? So, for example, imagine that O3 structure. Think about that pi electron. Right? Think about that pi electron. So, this is what we drew as one of the Lewis structure, correct? Right? So, think about this extra negative charge imparting electron and think of these pi electrons. Think of these moving around the three nuclei of oxygen. Right? So, as to spreading them out throughout the molecule so as to ensuring that no particular end of the molecule is really, really bombarded with high electron density, not bombarded, but loaded, overloaded with electron density. Because what happens if you overload any one particular atom of your molecule with too much electron density, that atom becomes a target of attack. For who? The electron hungry species. So let me say it again, right? You try to distribute your electron density throughout the molecule that is called as delocalization as we have over here. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.